Welcome to the hydraulic press channel. Today we are going to cross water into rock using hydraulic press. <laughs> yeah, sounds pretty stupid, but I have a solid plan because it's going to be a solid, the water. Yeah, here is the like water phase diagram and you see all the regular stuff. Here is the like water, steam, ice and up here, this is the rock. It calls, it says like ice seven but it's warm, it's like room temperature, so it can't be ice, so it, ha so it has to be a rock. All the water scientists have messed up the diagram, it's going to be a rock. And uh, it's not easy to get into the rock part of this chart. Uh, at minimum, we need about, I just realized that we don't need even that much, we need only about like, uh, fit over 6,000 bars to reach water 6 and then for water 7 we, we need like 21,000 bars and last week we managed to reach 2,000 bars so that's a bit more and then I had this 5,000 bar seal kit ready that's not enough so we are going to skip the seals all, all the way I have made this tool it has two parts. It has hardened steel cylinder, which is actually roller bearing roller. So those are really, really strong. I think this can take like 100 tons. Then we have this hole. The start of the hole is a bit over 20 millimeters, so we can nicely like put it in. But then it shrinks down to 19.95 millimeters, so it's 0 0.5 millimeters too small and we are going to just push it in anyways. So there is going to be zero gap between the roller and the hole. So if there is no gap, there is no leak. That's my hope. <laughs> and I even bought this like research book thing about researching water ice and different phases and it says that you should start with regular ice not water because the ice doesn't leak so easily as water but I want to crush water into rock so we have to start with water so it's going to be a bit harder and also this is much much smaller than last week because this is going to get quite dangerous if you have large volume of water there so now we have so little amount of water that if like everything goes to shit and the tools explode, the mess is going to be inside of the safety box. So nobody's going to die today. That's always good goal. Yeah, but that's about the plan. And we are not going to need much of force. I think it is like 30 tons. And first I want to test how much force it's going to take to force that in to tighter section because we have to like take that force away from the total force. I want to be sure that when we have the power on, I can 100% confidently say that there is a water rock inside of the tool. So let's push this in as a test. Okay, safety box is now closed. So if it explodes before going in, we are going to be okay. And I think it's going to take only like one ton. It might also explode, I have never tried anything like this before. Okay. I think now it's going. Yeah, definitely going, like two tons. Yeah, from like two to three tons. Okay. I machined a new tools. They're exactly the same size and dimensions. So the force needed for the like uh, bearing roll to be pushed into the steel, that's exactly the same. That's three tons maximum. So we can step in and with 23 tons, the water inside here, when it doesn't leak, it turns into I6. And then if we keep going on our like water phase diagram thing, around 70 tons of force 
it's going to turn into water seven. And I just read from the Wikipedia that some international mineral association, they declared that the ice seven is a mineral with the same thing as a rock. It turns out that you can find diamonds that have water inside and because they have been created in a such a high pressure, the water inside of the diamonds is ice seven. So it's a, it's a officially rock. So this is going to work so well. Okay, first stop, 23 tons. Let's hope that it doesn't leak. Hey, it works! It really works! Oh, it stopped working! What the hell? Ah, that was so close! Ew, why is it that color? There's the oil. I think we created like water cutting machine. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> it cut the steel. Yeah. Because it's like. Yeah, it looks there like. There is clearly some stuff on that water. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's. It cut, damn it, cut the steel. Hey. No, that was like all. Hey, I'm going to go all in, like really fast down. Yeah. It leaks so little that I think we can beat it with the speed. Mm. So I'm going to go full speed and I think we have short period of time when it's ice. So here we go, full speed. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not satisfied with this. I'm going to make new one. I'm going to make it like three times as tight. Mm. And then we are going to go with the full speed. Mm. And we are going to see that I6. I think this, what the I7 might be out of our reach. Mm. Yeah, but the I6 is going to definitely happen. Okay, now we have 15 hundredths of a millimeter squeeze there, so three times tighter. And I tested again, I had like small amount of distance left on the first test piece and it took around five tons now. So we can still easily reach I7 and I also made this change that I leave little bit air on top of the water so now the bearing can like start the like really tight part of the like stroke before the pressure gets really high. So there is like longer part of the hole that is really tight. So it should, if it, if it starts to act as a water cutter, it has to cut now through much thicker distance of steel. So I think this is going to now work much better or at least little bit better and we weren't far away from the i6 on the first go so I'm going to pump my cameras to run at 100 frames per second so we can slow this down and I'm going to go full speed in so if it leaks like slightly we are going to go in faster than it leaks out so I'm pretty confident that we are going to turn water into rock with this try here we go. And uh, here we go. Okay, I have no idea what happened. It started to leak on some point, but was that before I6? I don't know right now. I have to go 
go to my editing computer and look the both cameras synchronized together to know that. But I think we made I6. I, I, I hope really much so. I think we didn't make I, I7, but here is your answer. I don't, I don't make it any longer. Okay, it has been really, really close, but I think we made it. Let me explain. Here it is. It goes in and it starts to leak around 5000 bars and then it still keeps going down and the force increases until it hits the like large piece of steel and here is the upper part zoomed in and we wanna hit the 24 tons to like get I6 and here we can see that when it hits 26 tons it still goes down like fractions of a like millimeter or maybe like one or two millimeters before it stops on the big tool so if we assume that the force sensor doesn't have any delay then it was just on the border but check this out when it hits the roller bearing it takes like at least five frames to start to increase the force on the actual display so there has to be like five frames delay on the force sensor so if we take that into account then this definitely hit the 26 tons like before hitting the base plate and with 26 tons it's two tons over the like limit of i6 so there was like one fifth of a second conditions where water should be i6 so <laughs> that's not much but with my best knowledge today i can declare that we crushed water into rock but i'm not satisfied with this i wanna see no leaks and i wanna see also the i7 that has the status of mineral so that's coming i have to i have to read through the research paper there's like all fancy stuff about how they research this stuff as i said they like to start from ice i want to start from water to make the title come true but i'm going to read through the whole paper and come up with some fancy seals and i think there is even stuff to improve in this i could make it like way shinier surfaces and stuff like that maybe add some oil on top of the water because it leaks less yeah but i'm going to think about that and also give ideas in the comments how we can make this happen and that is all for today thank you for watching and have a nice day